Well, we've gone from one human game to another. We had Quincy's humans a second ago, and now we've got apparently Raven Hunters humans. Let's see what they look like in a second. Welcome in for game number 15 on the Lizard Man Room. As we admire this stadium that I often just click through. But there's someone who's put a lot of effort into creating something. Imagine that. Like, sometimes you just like stop and think. Someone has put all the effort into making this. Which presumably is quite a lot of time to make it look as good as it does. And then you spend most of the game not looking at it because you're looking at the pitch. My team only randoms Frenzy. Blood Bowl Nut has the secret sauce for randoming uh, block on his kinks. I roll Frenzy on them all. So what are we looking at? A good record, good looking human team. We've got uh, two guard blitzers. We've got a, a juggernaut Frenzy blitzer. Love a bit of juggernaut Frenzy. Got a tackle, not a tackle my but at least. Uh, got three catches. Do love a catch a heavy human build. I'm a, I, I love the four catch a human build because I think it's fun, but three catches is definitely uh, very flexible. Quite good for hunting skinks too. One of them's got wrestle. Two block linemen, one's got kick and an ogre. The ogre hasn't got any skills. Our team still has pretty similar to what it's had the last while. It's got the three block Saurus, two with guard, one with mighty bow. We've got a second movement line skink now. Um, other than that, all still the same. We've got 45,000 more takes and sister coaches. Four rerolls on the human team, I just noticed that's quite a high number of rerolls. Although I was watching someone uh, slay back magic in the World Championships earlier who's taken five rerolls on humans. Got to mute sneeze there, but uh, yeah, I, uh, it's a World Championship coach slay back magic who's taken five rerolls on humans, and when I watched, they did use them also. Definitely an unconventional build, yes. Definitely unconventional, bell, but the game I saw, they won, and they used all the rerolls. So there are different ways to win at Blood Bowl, aren't there? So opponent having a good think about this kickoff decision, and eventually decides to take the ball. How much guard have they got? Two guard. I think it's probably not worth going full heavy line here, is it? because they could work it out to hit us all. We did it last game, but we were up players last game. I think if we put all the guard in here, it could backfire on us. So let's play it more cautiously than that. Are we doing full boring boats? I think with two movement nine, we should probably bench one of the movement nines. Because you never know, they might pass. And just means we're guaranteed a movement line for the one turn try. Don't know why we're doing this. We should go four, shouldn't we? Why don't we slightly offset, not do a full offset. And do four instead of a boring vote. already Saturday so I'm going to have a nap. Thanks Bush Ranger, have a good nap. Hot take KBBB. KBBBL is better than the World Cup. I uh, not sure I'm going to agree with you on that although I haven't watched the KBBB. I can't even say that many Bs. The K Triple BL. <laughs> the World Championships have been honestly like really fun. Like I, I really, really like the format they've gone with this time. I think the three game knockout rounds are so intense and fun to watch. The standard of Blood Bowl has been really, really high and it's really fun watching good coaches. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's been cool, the World Championships. I have to say, I think it's been really cool. Obviously, like I am part of the World Championships coverage, so clearly like 
I'd probably want to say that anyway, but I, I genuinely do think it. I think it's been really, really fun. The round robins were silly because I got put in a group with J Lev and Strider and Pilots, which was not fair. I should have been put in, in a group that didn't have three really good other players. <laughs> but other than that, they're great. I mean, well, there's not, it's really not like, there's really not bad players in there, are there? It's World Championships. But I do think we had a very, very tough group. Oh, kick it straight to the catcher, to the throw, sorry. Uh, fouling frenzy for us. So we can gain two SVP for a, for a foul. Yeah, I I actually agree with that, Bob Bonner. Like, I think the one issue that I have had with it is I think they could, um, I think they could have... Uh, well, they maybe couldn't because of how it was scheduled, but I think in future it would be good to maybe give either 10 days or two weeks for the rounds because a week when you are... <sighs> I hate blood balls sometimes. <sighs> Can the apothecary do anything this time? Yeah, I mean, that is better. Saves our four SVP, but it means we're playing the whole game without an apothecary. And we didn't get the player back. I, again, though, this number didn't change. I'm really starting to think these are bugged. I'm really starting to think these are bugged because the apothecary is never changing that number. It's just been over and over again recently that's happened, and I've noticed it, and now I can't unnotice it. It keeps happening. I, the apothecary never changes the result. I'd still prefer that than have to start over with zero SVP, so like it's annoying, but it's even more annoying as something else dies, which is the big risk on turn one. I put away from some minor strength, they're dead. Okay, well, I guess that is a change in the number. I feel like it hasn't always been this way, but lately it's been like a lot of games where that's just happened. Oh, okay. They've planned a power section so we can use our on the ball to take a free hit here, just for the lols. SBP farming on us already. forward put a bit of pressure on and also get away from their tackle Bonehead. Uh, hmm. Serve. Oh, I didn't even think about the serve. With the frenzy skink, we could have done a serve. I didn't even think about it. You're actually right. We could have done a serve. That was silly. That would have been quite good to get a catcher off. I think you. Were, I think your play is right, not mine. I don't know, like, there's some pressure on the ball here, which is definitely not nothing, right? But they are only skinks.
But yes, definitely elf mindset. Go for the ball. Clearly a veteran player knew the correct clicking interaction for the uh, juggernaut skill to not just push us. Do we get to use on the ball here from the floor? Because I think they're going to throw... No, they can't throw a pass. They're carrying on the catcher. Where are they putting the ball then? I'm just going to run it here. I guess that's probably okay. I'm not sure it's very okay. Because the swings will be able to get around. You can't use on the ball from the floor. Diced. I don't... Yeah, I don't know if they're going to pass it. They'd have to hand off first pass. Which they could do. Be rowdy, but... Oh, that's exactly what they're doing. Okay. Opponent is not afraid of a three plus. Instant hand off to the thrower. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I guess we try to six me. Easy as you like. Why be scared of rolling dice when you can just make them all? That was a... Oh, they are a 1 plus thrower. I did miss that that's a 1 plus thrower. Okay, that's still a 3 plus. 3 plus handoff and 3 plus throw. <laughs> well, there's being afraid of it, Bud Volnut, and there's being reckless, which I would say maybe this was a bit reckless, but it's worked, so... I think he's um, no. Definitely a high-risk strategy. You're right, itchy. I can't complain. I'm not even complaining. I'm just saying it's. A, I'm just saying it's an aggressive strategy, which it is. It's definitely worked. So, aggressive does not mean wrong. I think we want to blitz this and get this free because the easiest one to get free, I guess we'd three dice with that one and get that one free, but no, I'd rather have a block moving. Good decision. Two assists, one, two dice. We can do. Not what we wanted. To a uh, skull there. PA one plus is fun. Like I'm not, yeah. Like, oh, like, obviously, I'm I'm reacting how I react, right? Like I was surprised by the play, but like you've got a one plus thrower, having fun with it. I I also like have a lot of time with that. Like, have fun with your fun piece because that is a fun piece. And that's the thing, Baron Bucky, isn't it? Like, they hadn't given themselves much ball safety, so in some ways, like, going for the aggressive play was the only way out. And I guess, like, again, the four reroll build, like, that's indicative of a mindset, like, play those aggressive plays. Fun bad, says J-Lev. No fun. 
No fun in battle. And takes the score. So we're back to 11, but we are Dinosaurus. I mean, we're used to being Dinosaurus, right? We play most games Dinosaurus. So nothing new there. We play many games down to Saurus, so. <laughs> Only play optimal. Only allowed. No fun in Blood Bowl. I did miss it was passing one plus. I wonder what you put on this next. Put like Cannoneer on it as well. So you can just do those plays like all the time. <laughs> Cannoneer would make that last throw like a two plus. Sorry, Connie, but Dayday's -Day close to the stat now, so it's Dayday's -Day turn to carry the ball. Hmm. We had a little kick as well, I didn't notice that. On the ball, OP. Timeouts, we lose turn. It's okay, we're early enough, it's not a big difference. I have blocked him. That's good. Um, good cross. Oh, all right, don't do the bits I wanted to do because I misclicked. That's not ideal. It's also not ideal. That's still not ideal. <laughs> all right, it's still going very badly. That's a really annoying misclick. Oh, it happened. Baron Becky. Oh my god, I thought I thought I didn't have block is the answer. You're right. Doing some really stupid stuff today. Not noticing that I have block and they don't. I think actually it wasn't even that. I think in my head it was that that had block because that the last game the ogre had block. We just played against an ogre that had block. And I think my brain went Okay, that doesn't that doesn't work, but it did work. So yeah, the answer is because I'm an idiot. Um, not for the first time today. But yeah, I thought that, I thought both down didn't work. But you're right, I could have taken both down. So in many things, in many ways, I am an idiot. Yeah, we did just play an ogre with block. I think that's what my brain said. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. 
Well, at least we should be able to stabilize from here, I hope. Try not to keep being an idiot. That's goal number one. See, with four rerolls and four turns left, I think I might have rerolled that just because you don't want to roll armor on it, but maybe they're saving it all for a mega turn. Uh, ball can go quite far here if the crocs moves. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, yeah, so let's try and move the crocs. Knocked my mic cable out, sorry for going quiet for a second, but yeah, Crocs not moving, unfortunately, it really hinders our movement for the turn. We just needed to get out of the way, but with it not being out of the way, it meant we didn't have path through that tackle zone, so yeah, definitely a bummer that one. Uh, would have really helped to have that moving, because we would have blitzed this instead of where we blitzed. Where can we go to now? I can still get to like here. Still move plenty in, so I think we can still do this. Hey, Pat Kinnis, thank you, yeah. No, I, I knock my cable out. It happens way too often. The cable on the back of this microphone is loose and I knock it out. Sometimes when I like tap the microphone at all, it just falls out. Not my pun, sadly. Um, by the way, Baron Bucky, the pun was Vitrolling Monkey came up with it, but it is a great pun. I'm a big fan. Someone this morning suggested Tree Ceratops Rex. Not Tree Ceratops Rex, just Tree Ceratops is the alternative. Which also would have been good. But I do like Tree Rex. So the good news is in the movement line skink, we don't have to move very far to get in scoring range. Bad news is they're punching skinks. And we have used our Apo. It's a real bummer about the Croc score. Because now they're tagging the Croc score somewhere where we can't do anything with it. Just have to stand it up and leave it on a lineman. So yeah, the Croc score for the one that turn was, was rough. So I think they should have put this catcher one square further back because I'm going to blitz it now and I wouldn't have if it was one square further back. Um, so I can three dice it from here. Not that it matters because our blocking dice are rubbish at the moment. We don't need to force it. Should have set that up first. Got a frenzy self, haven't they? we do follow up here because it gives up the hits but I think we can do them
Oh, was that, that wasn't stunned, was it? Just lost that at the back. Oh well. Go a bit slower, tree. Stop rushing everything. Maybe you won't make so many silly mistakes. Okay, just push that's nice. Mm -hmm. Pat, I know you're a big uh, oh it's on the stream title ZFL, I know you're a big ZFL fan tomorrow at 9.30am UK time 9.30 UTC for the next ZFL fix they are targeting the Sphinx heavily now because they know they've used the apothecary so anything they get off is staying off so far, this game's been tough. So far. If they want to hit that Saurus with the catcher, they're going to need another assist because of the guard, and it'll be two, three, four, five. Still be one dice. They could bring their guard around. I think it might be some rushes. If we're doing dinosaur puns, there's also this the Cretaceous period. Love it. Okay, those are not taking that hit. You wearing perfume, Jim? No, it's a scent. Very different from. So we just dodge them, I guess. You're right. It's called. Back up the screen. By Tommy Helping. Yep, Ogre. And then finish off with the Ogre who is being more cooperative than our Crocs has been. That player had a lot of good comes from spending any time on the ground in this game. I think we need to take a hit here and see how it goes. Because if we did pow, that might give us a score right now. Did not pow. The second question is, are we following? I think the answer is no. So we could put an assist in here, hit there. Not amazing, is it? Not a bit amazing. If we hit here, push you back, and we've got two dodges. I feel like we have to go for the score here. I'm not sure it's going to get better. But it's very iffy. I don't think we've got the side switch on. Not great. In fact, I think we now can't go for this goal. That was not what we needed. If the player is pushed, it will finish in the public. Than players. Are there pals on these dice? Hmm. I think I have to tag this, otherwise, if we fail this dodge, it's just an instant preserve. Ball. Found a pal, would have preferred it on any of the uh, preceding 
um, logs, but I guess better late than never. Mm. The lottery raptor. <laughs> Welcome in due time, your first time in chat. Oh, thank you for the follow, I missed it. And thank you for the follow fruit bat as well. Well, the ball's still hard to sack, which means we will have a chance to try and do stunty nonsense on turn eight, if nothing else. Unless they just make the hard cage dive, but gives us some chance. Bron tree saurus. I mean, these are all good puns, but I do think it's showing that tree rex was a, a, a cleaner, simpler pun. Tree rex was very to the point. Well, we knew that was a risk, unfortunately, but it was, if we didn't do it, and we failed to dodge, then we had, again, free surf on our ball carrier, so had to do it. Sadly, for Brit Britulic Monkey, that is a career ender. This is part of the problem with losing a Soros on turn one, though. You lose a Soros on turn one, and it's harder to protect the skinks, because you've lost one of the players who protects the skinks. So, yeah, the literal first hit of the game, Kazingasaurus has the knock-on impact of it's then harder to look after your skinks as well. Why does tree never buy a whisker? She always misspells. Boo. Boo that joke. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Maybe I should steal that if I'm doing the cast with Dudorino on Andy's channel. I need a half-time report. Oh, flip off. I rolled so many not pals last turn. And you do a one dice and pow it. That's massive. That's absolutely massive. Huge, huge difference getting the one dice pal compared to that standing up. And you get a knockdown that one as well. Yeah, I mean, that's absolutely smoke most of the plans by rolling two one dice knockdowns after we rolled all those dice without knockdowns. That's really aggravating. Because <laughs> you wouldn't re-roll a push on that either. Like, so you're only getting that power if you roll the five or six first time. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think we have a choice here, right? We just gotta roll a bunch of stunty dodges. Hmm? Which would be a lot less if they hadn't rolled those one dice knockdowns. Gotta hit the tackle, right? Like we just don't want to go through tackle. Ah, uh, guess you could hit the catch at the bottom, but then if it does not, it makes it guaranteed three. Let's try and slow down. Make you think about it. I'm pretty sure you're not doing anything. Like if I hit this tackle and it goes here, we still have to go through it. If I hit it from here then a push is good enough and then we need one, two, three, I think that's because we because going that way it would still be at best three so I think that's as good as we're going to get. Oh my god I'm an idiot. Alright I'm an idiot. I've got to put the assist in. I've got to put the assist in. That's me being an idiot. Again not the first time today. That should have been an assist there to make it a two dice so now we just got to do it this way off the tackle. Well, that was very lucky for me being an idiot. Hmm. Yeah, saved by the Santi there. Better to play the ball, you do one tackle dodge, one not tackle. There was two tackle dodges there, uh, Jada. Wasn't there? Hmm. Well, yeah, bailed out there by Stunty Nonsense. For sure. For sure. I am making some really dumb mistakes today. Oh, 
I would really like to get, I think we skip this one, really like to get some removals here. So we've not done well on the removals this game and I could make this drive a lot less stressful if we got some. Oxygor keeping up the theme, not being very helpful. So the plan there was to free up the mighty boat to do the blitz by hitting with a Proxigor, but that didn't work, so now we're going to be blitzing without block. Let's bring all the skinks back so they can't just blitz skinks because they have been working that strategy. See, even though that wasn't smart, I could have come around and given myself a second hit. I didn't. So much for the let's get a removal idea. Would have been nice, but we have got the ball. Mm -hmm. Please don't take this commentary in your play right your playlist. Seems to so entwine this play. Feel hard done by seven turns, then the skink scores. I mean, yeah, that is the thing with Lizard, isn't it? Like, you, uh, you have such a good out of jail free card with the skinks. There's such a potential to just do something unreasonable with the skinks at the end of a turn, the end of a drive. It's been interesting doing this run on them. They've definitely like been incredibly frustrating at times, but most of the frustration has been to do with the fact that the Saurus just refused to stay alive. That has been consistently the biggest frustration of the team is the Saurus. Deaths. Which seems to be a pretty consistent experience for everyone who plays Lizard, so. What have we got here? Okay, Ideally, I'd like to get off here again. So we'll take that ahead. Well, I guess it does get off the over because it just means we still have to do that, deal with that player afterwards. Um, I should probably say something. Well, that's good skill. And then we blitz here. Can we get the crocs for working? We can. You're just too fast. Break some legs, please. I mean, this just gets hit by any stuff to stand up, don't you? You need to bring in another human to make it a two dice, and that means there's at least using up some of their players. We have a meaty lizard cube. We just dropped the Saurus in full skinks. I mean skinks plus morgue could be a play. Full skinks and then use their TV matchmaker to match yourself up on TV. 
since her bad stars mostly well we used Zerg a couple of games ago and Zerg did murder a flesh golem on the first action of the whole game which was pretty exciting using the special ability as well to break the armor kind of weird seeing like on lizards like it's just a random human hanging out with all the big lizards but he's pretty good let's get the power we're gonna do a lot of pressure here yeah, nice star break nice star break stun putting us down to four lizards for a couple of turns here is not nice four dinosaurs not four lizards four big lizards Bow, do a thing. Mighty Bow, in fact, did do a thing. Plus one on the armor. Instant Apo. Playing, playing for all the marbles. So we haven't covered it, so it is what it is. We have to eat that because we only got two rerolls, but it's bad. It is bad. So yeah, there's definitely a one dice on the ball here with the wrestle catcher. Potentially two. One, two, three, four, five. If you rush the ogre, it's definitely two. We're not rushing the ogre. One, two, three. Double rush this one for two days. Mm. We've just been out bashed. Like, we've been really out bashed. Like, they've had two removals in the game. We've had none. Um... There's been stuns on top of that. I really feel like the lizards, the big dinosaurs, are doing way too little in terms of breaking human armor. Yeah, I could have done the ogre rush blitz, but that would have been pretty rowdy. Coming in with two dice. Haven't left themselves any recovery. I would have wanted to keep one of these catches free for recovery, I think. Oh, the power. That's the worst case. I was hoping it'd be the wrestle. No oh, armor break at least. Oh, pretty bad. I have to try the crocs first here because it would mean I could blitz with this afterwards. That's quite a Good job, crocs. Stone 
We have to stay, otherwise we're blocking our own path for the bullets. Guess we're not. Staying helps that a bit. Man, mighty bow armor seven. Really hope we might at least get an armor break. It's just not happening for us. The armor stuff. Two mighty bow hits and nothing at all for them. Should have done this before. Should definitely have done that before. Come on, game. Just play proof as humans. It's all right, Chris. It's just next door. I'm getting really frustrated about this game. Like, it just feels like we've taken a million blocks without armor breaks. Which I'm sure is not completely accurate, but like, yeah, it really feels like we've taken so many hits to not break any armor and then having to spend both rerolls that turn just to not turn over on blocks. Like we had a mighty bow hit on armor eight plus, we had a mighty bow hit on armor nine plus. Like, I'm not asking to remove them all, just like any stuns to relieve a bit of this pressure. Mm. It's just not happening at all. Because they're a player up on us and they know it. And they're using it well, but like... At some point, having the armor matter, having the number of blocks matter, it's kind of needed for us to have a chance. Morning, GDYT. Probably have to dodge this time. I think we're just gonna have to lean into that now, especially with the rerolls gone, it's the best thing we've got. Just need like the dice to not be awful for a minute. That's what we really need. We need them just to not be awful for a minute. Again, 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 not what we needed. Why change the habit of a lifetime? I don't know how it can be this hard to ever roll a 9 plus. I mean, it's been 8 plus with the amount of mighty blows we're taking, but we can't get that either. We've got to go for that. That goes for the last. I guess we're just sticking, maybe it's just sticking there. 
This is doing something. Oh my god, we broke armor. Oh my god, we finally got one. Oh, that has felt like an impossible task. Alright, that is good. Um, now that this has got the back covered, do we take this hit? Before, I was thinking definitely not. And now that this is no longer a threat on this side of the ball, the advantage of doing it is if we do hit it and break armor, that means they can't just use the ogre to punch that sword as easily. Fine. Mm. JD Whitey showing up, bringing us some better luck on the dice. Thank you, JD Whitey. Mm. And nice to get some SVP on Dimmy as well. I would have loved to wait till the end of the turn and do this rush, and like maybe with hindsight, you look at it and think, I wish I could have done. The problem is that that was only after we do every other dice and any of that could have failed. So at least it's doing this first means it's doing something right. Like you've got to make a decision about how you deal with that. So. Yes. <laughs> it's nice to see someone getting their neck. Oh, double scar for our opponent. Nice to see someone getting their neck snap brings three joy. Well. In this specific instance, maybe. <laughs> In this specific instance. It's a rough one for them, isn't it? That's um agility bust on a guard piece. But to be fair, they did a greedy power apo, so they took the risk on it. Like they did a greedy apo to keep the KO on for this one. Which I'm not saying they shouldn't do, because they're trying to win the game, but I always think if I do a, if I apo a KO and then something gets injured then like I kind of have to just accept it right like that's my my choice that I made. As ZFL is tomorrow, nine thirty AM UK time. Another cows for the humans who have been successfully banging us out for the whole game. Oh, I thought for sure we were going to base the ball with tackle there. I would have based the ball with tackle there. I'm very happy you haven't. Very, very happy to get to move this freely. I mean, I've still, still got lots of problems here, but at least that one is uh, able to go freely. One, two, three. I think I'd have blitzed this one. Yep. Good. Might as well take that because it's a safe-ish action. I don't know why I haven't set these up. There's no reason not to turn that up. This one, maybe I could say I'm going to dodge it, but I don't think I am, so let's do that. So we've got three plus dodge here, and then we try to use a croc score to free up the Saurus. does not work. So we've got easy one dice on the ball, unless we can do a five plus dodge. Which we can. Hmm. I mean, they still have an easy one dice because I didn't expect that to work and so I clicked the wrong square. Um, definitely makes the two dice harder because before they could have got this round. Do we just live with that or do we do the step on two? The step on two doesn't do that much, right? They can use dodge, dodge, dodge off on a three plus with dodge, so I think we probably say that's all right. Oh, well, they we couldn't get two dice with this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think maybe it would have been better to stand on that, but I think it's definitely not worth doing the rush after making the lucky dodge. So. These Saurus weren't made to kill, they were made to dodge, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Blood 
Okay, so that one's not assisting. So probably going for the one base here, I think. Gonna say the only other option would have been to do the hard dodge and that tackle. I actually would have liked not moving that tackle there and moving it here because that way, if you push me, you can use the tackle to at least push me onto tackle. But why worry about that when you're just gonna roll powers? Why worry about not rolling powers? Well, that is probably GG because we aren't really gonna be able to respond to it. A frustrating GG. But GG, I mean, unless we can just roll a power back, I guess. That's what we're going to have to try for. Um, I should probably say something meaningful to all our Cabal Vision viewers. So we're getting all the not powers out of the system here. Obviously, we are going to have a power waiting for us. They got a power, so we get a power, right? We actually do. Oh, my God. Actually, I didn't even notice that was a frenzy one, so we could have served if we hadn't powered. Uh, but we did get the power. And we got an armor break. And it goes out, which is probably bad. Oh, oh that was nearly amazing. And now where is it? Yeah, it's bad. It's really bad. So after all that, it's still a disaster. Uh, that's really bad. <laughs> there was amazing. This, super bad. Uh, try to do all sorts of skink stuff to get there, I guess. Maybe dodge this one onto the tackle first. I mean, that's literally made it easier for them than not knocking the ball down. Like... They've got less far to go with it now. So that's pretty crummy. I think we've been very unlucky in this game, but hey-ho. Hey-ho. Like, we've been very heavily banged out. I'm not sure that's likely, given the amount of hits we've had on armor 9. They have targeted skinks, that's fair enough, but like, yeah, like we could have got more than that one removal really late in the game. And then they get the one dice yeah, power on that as well. Frustrating. Frustrating that it's happened. I definitely could have played better, like there's been plenty of times where I've done something stupid, so I guess that's all you can think about, but I do think they've been very much luckier than us. Sadly not back, because they've got, again, everything they needed to stop even that play from happening. I guess we could do the 6B. Maybe that's the best play at this point. Probably is, to be honest. Mm -hmm. That scatter was such a pain, because like that was went from being literally amazing for us to being w genuinely worse than, normal, than like if we just sculled the block to begin with. Like, the scatter went somewhere that was just much better for them than where they had it. So, like, it literally took it from bad to, like, amazing for them. Yeah, there's, there's nothing else on here. Um, oh, it's cool. Just roll for a six. Mm. 
Well, GG to our opponent. I don't, I, I don't, I don't think they played badly. Like I think they, they made good decisions, but I do think they got very lucky to uh, to not suffer any attrition that whole game. While we got Saurus cast off on turn one, into lots more the rest of the game. So we've continued to get SVP, including another MVP on the Saurus who doesn't need it but we will take tackle. It would be really nice to hit MVPs on the other stories, but not our story. Uh, we'll keep Dukes. Like, oh, it's, it's super frustrating. Like, I almost want to cycle Dukes just because we've got all this cash. It means we get to have another Saurus next game. But the SVP is, like, pulling teeth at the moment, so giving up four SVP feels bad. So probably we shouldn't cycle. Um... Sadly, movement bus skinks definitely do get cycled. No, not another comedian. Another regular skink. Random and see, we did that before. I just, like, if I'm sitting here saying we're never ever going to get more Bloxaurus, then the correct play is to wait. Like, it just is. Like, play the next game, even lose the next game. It doesn't really matter, right? Like the SR system, the ladder, it's all completely meaningless. So the correct answer is to wait and see if you and get the block you want. It's just frustrating. Like, mm -hmm. like literally the wins don't matter. The losses don't matter. The games don't matter. Like none of it matters. And if that's all true, then you're better off being patient and getting the block. Mm -hmm. Rather than Again, given how hard it is to get the SVP on the rookie blockers that aren't doing box. Going the other way. Hmm. So that was game number 15 on the Lizards. A frustrating one, I think. I think an unlucky one as well. But we're definitely one we could have played better. So uh, oh, we need to name this skink. Um... Salino joins the team. If you're watching on YouTube. And uh, you're enjoying the content. Hit that like and subscribe. 